Hello everyone, Ultimate Steve here, and welcome back to Season 1, Episode 1 of Kerbal Space Program Hardcore Mode. So, let me explain briefly what Kerbal Space Program Hardcore Mode is. Number one, difficulty is set to hard with a few extra twists. Number two, I am down in the, the corner there. That's me, that's Ultimate Steve Kerman. And I have to be on every single ship, and if I die, the series is over. I also haven't decided on a punishment, like, like a stakes. Like, if I lose, I have to do this. Uh, I, I thought long and hard, but I couldn't think of something. So, top comment, uh, I'll do that if I lose this, this series. So, uh, win condition. I have to bring back a surface sample from every single uh, planet and moon in the entire game, and I have to get them in, like, one sample collection on the roof of the vehicle assembly building. Uh, and... Uh, no probes allowed. I have to be in every single ship, unless, like, I guess I can make some certain exceptions for redocking something. Like, I can leave empty stuff behind, I just have to be in it in order to control it, unless it's, like, really close in for docking, uh, essentially. It's, like, nothing, uh, nothing absurd. I, uh, hold on, I'm going through the upper atmosphere. I need to- oh, okay, I, I didn't even get all this stuff from the lower atmosphere. Okay, so you have stuff from the upper atmosphere. We're gonna get a wrap into space, and then we are going to, uh, do, like, We'll get lower atmosphere on the way down. So, uh, yeah, this is our... Uh, you're, you're probably wondering how we unlocked uh, liquid fuel engines, and it's because I uh, did, like, a boring, like, collecting science on the launch pad, the runway, uh, first. Um, I, like, just, I could skip that. Like, so I did that, boring stuff. That was Risk Zero and Risk Zero A were the craft names I did this. So this one is Risk One. Uh, and look at this, we're in space already. Uh, I'm in there, and hopefully I, I don't die on the way back down, because that would be a really awful end to this series, just starting, uh, like, 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 series that started, like, uh, one minute and 51 seconds ago. Okay, so, uh, again, to summarize, just briefly in case I forgot anything, uh, uh, I gotta go everywhere, I gotta get a surface sample, I gotta put them all in the vehicle assembly building in one container, and if I die, that's it. I I, lo I lose the series, and I have to do whatever in the top comment uh, below. Granted, that's probably gonna get like two comments, so I probably won't have much choice either way. Uh, but but we'll, but we'll see. So uh, yeah. So we're just we're just coming in. Uh, and by the way, there's the DLCs are installed. I think the only mod I really have is uh, Better Time Warp because I couldn't be bothered to reinstall it. Uh, to, to uninstall it for this series, because this is also my solar station and even back uh, save, which I will get back to eventually. I haven't abandoned it, I just... I flip between two projects. I tend to hype- I, I tend to fixate on something for like, uh, for, for a few weeks and then forget about it for a few months, so don't worry, I'll come back to them eventually. Okay, I'm not gonna chance the, uh, parachute deployments. I'm gonna open it up high and we're gonna be absolutely amazing and we're not gonna die. Okay, fantastic, we didn't die. So, I have officially survived the very first mission, and I <laughs> now I have to go everywhere without dying. I need to not take very many risks at all. I need to... Yeah. <laughs> and I'm wearing my, my, my planet's bracelet for good luck. All right, and touchdown. I am going to... Oh, hatch is obstructed? Oh, okay. Well, maybe I, maybe I should have not obstructed the hatch. Uh, I also forgot science for landing, but whatever, we can get it later. So now we're going to unlock the barometer so we can get some more easy science. Uh, we're gonna unlock the heat shield. We don't really need it, but you know, I'm just gonna be on very the safe side for this time. I'm gonna get the service bay just in case. I'm gonna get the parachute. And I'll just buy everything from this node. And the only other option is, actually, hold on. Let's wait for the science junior, and then let's get that. Then let's do a big science collection mission. Don't mind me just grabbing a little bit of barometer data. And a little bit more of barometer data. And now I can get basic science. And here we go. The launch of the Risk 4. The Risks 2 and 3 were those things we put on the runway and launch pad. And I may have accidentally put Jebediah in one of them instead of me, but technically it didn't fly, so uh, we, we should be okay there. This is not going into orbit. This is just another suborbital thing. I forgot to run this on the launch pad. Uh, okay, but first of all, so the idea is we only have one barometer. We are going to collect all of the experiments, and we are going to gradually run these uh, as we go up to grab all of the uh, things. So if we collect all, that won't be able to do anything. We can close the doors to reduce the drag. And then once we're like... So the idea was I had one for pad, one for atmosphere, one for high atmosphere, one for space, but we we won't have the pad and we can't land with this. So we actually can't use it all. Uh, but yeah, so it, it'll be fine. Uh, it's just that we will get a little bit less science, which is, which is fine. I remember the- okay, good, I did remember the parachute, because that would have been a little bit of a not great end to this series in episode one.
Oh, uh, our Apple F is actually really high, so I'm not going to burn the engine anymore. So I have a little bit to slow down with. And we're in space! Okay, so we can conduct the material study. We can keep that. We can take the barometer. Uh, keep that. Collect everything. And I think that's all we're able to do. So let's close the doors. Let's slow down once we have the time. And we accidentally broke the entire planet. We rip it in half. Isn't that fun? I love when the entire planet rips in half. That's my favorite part of every day. We're coming in hot. Oh, uh, that's a bit too hot. Uh, a little bit too hot. So I need to remember not to time warp with, uh, with any of this on. But this is still a survivable re-entry. Because, like, the, the, the capsule separates. I just want to use this engine to slow down a bit so we don't have any entry issues. And that should be slow enough. And we should be able to just freely time warp our way back down. And we can get barometer from the ocean. Uh, and I don't think there's anything else we can get from the ocean. Remember to deploy the parachute. That's important. The planet is still ripped in half. I kind of want to go over there and see what it is. Oh, it's just the ocean? Like, okay, uh, I think I'm Moses. I parted the Red Sea. Or, no, no, I didn't part it. It's just that it's above, the, the ground spawned in above the, what, what? I don't know what's going on here. Moses is over there. He, he, uh, he's going whoosh and the, the ocean's going wee. Barometer from the water. And that's good. We completed another mission successfully and we didn't die yet. Okay, it turns out I am just barely short of being able to get advanced rocketry, which is the node that I really, uh, really want in order to be able to go to the moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a material study on the pad real quick. I accidentally got Jeb again, but that doesn't matter because there's no risk on this mission. Okay, you know what? To prevent that from happening again, I am literally going to fire everyone else so I'm the only Kerbal in the list. And if I need other Kerbals, I can hire him back later. LV-909 engine, S tier. It's going to be like really good engine yeah I, I i i this this sentence is coherent it's risk six time we're going to the moon or mun if you want to pronounce it i mean i'd like pronouncing it mun but you know whatever uh let's go okay so that decoupler we don't have radio decouplers yet so we uh we we, we attached two things to a stack decoupler which actually lets exhaust through so we could fire the engine at the same time uh so yeah um this is supposed to take me on a mun flyby i don't have a contract to do it i just have a contract to orbit uh, but I have the science for it because uh, we're actually running short on money So we couldn't upgrade the launch pad or the tracking station. So we're gonna be flying pretty blind But I I've done mun a few times. It's just that we might not be super accurate with it So hopefully we have enough fuel and hopefully we don't die uh, So the other the other thing is Minmus I'm gonna have to upgrade the tracking station to go to Minmus unless I'm really smart about it because I'm actually taking an orbital mechanics class right now and technically I know the math to get to Minmus without having to use the tracking station but it's going to be really risky and I think I don't have to do it but I can if I need to also the thrust to weight ratio is really lacking on this we are really side slipping here we're going to side slip all the way to orbit isn't that basically what Atlas 5 401 does though I was not for it for one one. I don't know the one with the one weird solid booster on the side just kind of power slides off the launch <laughs> It always looks really goofy just having one solid rocket booster Stage cut off second stage ignition and this stage we have plenty of fuel should be enough to at least go to Mun flyby and back if not maybe more like this is definitely enough to do a one-way landing, but I don't want to do a one-way landing. Like, why would you want to do a one-way landing? Like, the entire point of this mission is that it has to be two-way, which also means that I, I'm not going to be able to do rescue missions. Like, should I allow myself one, like, rescue mission card? Uh, uh probably not, but maybe. Or maybe it's that only then can I use the unmanned stuff I put in the- I don't know. We'll, we'll see- we'll see about it. But, like, uh... Because, like, the thing is, I won't be dead, but the series won't be over either. I mean, because, like, it's only over if I die. Uh, so under what conditions should I allow myself rescue missions? I'll think of that. Because I didn't actually think of that before starting this series, which I probably should have. So, hmm. How can I make this fair? I don't know. Your suggestions in the comments. Hopefully it doesn't... Hopefully... I'm not gonna have to deal with that today. Almost certainly. 
Maybe we'll just call it over, game over if that happens, like if I get stranded at all. Okay, this is only barely enough fuel to do a one-way landing, so I'm not going to attempt it, but I'm probably going to at least... Yeah, definitely Mun Flyby. Mun Flyby, 100%. Anyway, we're in orbit, uh, so we got the contract and world first stuff from that, so we're at least not going to be broke anymore. Uh, Mun. I can't even set his target right, so I got to do the old look over the horizon trick. Because if you don't know, the angle that you need to go to to launch to the Mun is basically exactly the same as uh, when the when the moon rises over the horizon. And I'm actually a bit late now. And granted, that changes depending on exactly how high your orbit is, uh, but in general, it's, good, it's close enough for Gerbil. Like, like it's, it's not very variable depending on, like, as long as you're in a reasonably low altitude, you'll get an encounter. It just might not be a good encounter. And we're coming up on the mine. And well, hopefully that'll put us on a decent trajectory. Goodbye, Kerbin. Okay, now we gotta do all the sciencey things uh, from a uh, high space over Kerbin. Observe mystery goo. We can do a crew report. Right, I forgot that we can literally take crew reports out. We can't still can't do EVA reports because uh, we have to upgrade the thing for that. But we can do high over Kerbin. And we're gonna meet the moon. How close are we gonna meet the moon? We're going to be on a collision course, aren't we? Yep. <laughs> uh, fortunately... Hmm. A retrograde is a free return trajectory, so I can alter my trajectory here to be a free return trajectory by simply facing uh, west and propelling myself out this way. Oh, I'm not even going to periaps uh, value. So I'm actually going to go in a little bit so I can get some more science, just in case that's not moon space low. And now, let's do another round of science because we're high, 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 high space mun. Yeah, I, I can, I can English 100%. I can very, 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 very much English. It's the moon. And that's okay. This is going to be low enough for for low, and now we can do the science here. Observe. Uh, keep. All right. I have to collect. Collect all. Uh, crew report. Barometer. Thermometer. And I did the goo already, so I can just collect. Container. Collect all. Okay. Twelve data, and that's all we're going to get from this mission. And that should be, it should put me on a free return trajectory. Or close to it. Nope, definitely not a free return trajectory. Uh, I'm going to wait until the apoaps to be able to decrease my orbit, because I don't think I have enough fuel to do it from there, or it, it'll be close. Now the, now, the risk, of course, of doing it this way is I could accidentally gravity assist myself off the moon and fling myself into deep space. But I do have enough fuel to correct for that if it happens, although maybe not without maneuvers. Okay, 25 kilometer periaps. Let's go and back to home and not die. <laughs> Oop, getting a bit closer, getting closer, getting close. Uh, that's actually too fast. I'm going to slow down a little bit with the engine before decoupling, just to be absolute safe, very safe. I'm taking the age-old advice of uh, Scott Manley, and I'm going to be doing my best to fly as safe as possible. And we're only barely cooking the heat shield. So it's going to be very simple to land this thing. We might even get to that island there. Actually, no, we're too far to the... which direction is north. But, like, we're about, like, like prograde retrograde, we're pretty much spot on landing on that island but not, not normal, anti-normal. So it's Jeb's, uh, not Jeb, I am going to go for a very nice swim. That would terrify me. I'm gonna let off the time warp just in case the time acceleration breaks my parachutes. And I realized I, I didn't actually need to put the goo up there, I could have put it on the stage we dropped. That would have lowered my re-entry mass slightly and it led to a safer re-entry, I think. But uh, you know, what's done is done, so we can learn these lessons for future missions 
and probably future seasons for when I inevitably die on episode 3. And splash down. 143.7 science. We have 166 to spend. Let's see what we can get. Radio decouplers and flight control for the safety it provides us. I'm only going to unlock the things I need to unlock, though, because we are running a bit short on money. The sensible thing to do for progression would be to get the skipper engine and the uh, big solid rocket boosters, because they're fairly cheap, and, and the poodle, too. However, in the interest of safety, I do want to kind of work towards precision propulsion so I can get separatrons so I can easily make a launch escape system. However, I actually can't get there right now uh, because uh, I need to upgrade R&D, which is going to be a long time coming. So I actually am going to go to the skipper now that I think about it. That's a lot of expensive parts. I'm not going to unlock any of them right now because I need to upgrade facilities. Uh, astronaut complex will allow me to EVA, which is really important. Uh, I do need, I do like absolutely need the launch pad in order to get further progression-wise. So let's see what we get for contracts. Return to crew range from orbit of the moon. I can do that. Uh, science data from space around the moon. Science data from service around the moon. Uh, let's do that. Let's. Uh, Upgrade mission control. That's really expensive. Uh, but we'll need to do it eventually, so... Alright. Science data from space around Kerbin. Science data from the surface of the moon. And that should be enough to finance our journey to the moon. Uh, is there anything else we can easily complete? I test the kickback at the launch site. Uh, I mean, yeah, we get a thousand fun. We get we, we get 5,000 funds for a free lower stage. Sure, let's do it.